Welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Mayor Diane Jones, your host, and today we have a couple of guests to talk about an important issue in our community. We have Barbara Uran, who is the superintendent of Cottonwood Oak Creek School District, and Paul Tai, who is the superintendent of the Mingus Union High School District. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Great to have you on the show again. So today we are going to be talking about a very serious issue in our community. And you're going to present some facts to help the public understand um, the issue. And one is that Mingus Union High School will be asking the voters of the community for a capital for an override. Mm -hmm for capital. Yes, so it's technically um, been renamed District Additional Assistance. District um, it additional used to be called assistance. Capital. We still refer to it as Capital because it's restricted for capital mm -hmm. items, and I'll explain what that means, but um, it'll appear on the ballot as District Additional Assistance. Okay. Um, I believe the legislature renamed it to make it sound like they're giving schools additional funds. Okay. <laughs> so um, maybe politically charged a little bit, but um, the Mingus board has um, asked the voters, the local voters, to support a district additional assistance or capital override to meet the capital needs that um, have been ongoing over the last uh, six years since the legislature has cut most of our capital funds. That affects both districts, um, and well, all districts in the state for that matter, but um, we're operating at a million dollars less per year, not adjusted for inflation than we did in 2008. About half of that is capital, and um, the Mingus board voted to um, ask the local taxpayers to backfill about half of those cuts. So this um, override would be for capital items about um, $500,000 a year to, um, to buy things. So you might say, well, what was last year's override? That was maintenance and operations, which is to pay for operating. And most of our operating, 85 to 90 percent of our budget is for salaries and benefits. Teachers. We pay people to do things. Right. And this is to buy things. So okay. capital capital items, and the two funds can't go back and forth, so there are restrictions on funds. So these funds would be to buy things. So, so everything things, from school books, buses, buses, textbooks, desks, um, computers, classroom technologies, um, you know, things that are bigger than supplies. Um, would be considered capital items. So, you know, a chair is a capital item, a pencil is a supply, okay. even though they're both things. Okay. And it's it's pretty regulated as to what you um, can spend it on, but, um, you know, our bus fleet is uh, is quite old. We bought five used buses last year. We borrowed money to do so, and that, um, you know, <laughs> two of them are broken down already. So it's... Two of the five. Yeah, those you are our newest buses. You were <laughs> sharing that you have one bus that you really need, and you're, you have it in the shop for a... $20,000 yeah. charge that you'll be receiving so to repair it. One of those five new buses, the uh, you know the motor is blown and mm -hmm. it's uh, it, you know, it is what it is. It's out of warranty and so um, rebuilding a motor and um, the emission system is a $20,000 expense. So it's mm -hmm. at the international dealer in Flagstaff, but you know those are the kinds of things that even, you know, that's that's one of our newest buses, mm -hmm. and so one of um, your newest used buses. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> yes, um, and that's a travel bus, so mm -hmm. it's a unique bus. It's uh, meant for long distance trips, and it has additional compartments for sports teams, things like that. And so you want reliable buses going out on the road. And, Absolutely, um, it our, has our precious cargo, our students yeah. and our children and our community. Yeah, and even driving around, you know, our regular runs. You know, our buses are safe. We've got you know great staff supporting that and great um, mechanics. But um, you know they're 20, 25 years old mm -hmm. with you know a couple hundred a lot thousand of miles, miles on, them. on them at that age, right? And, and then you were just uh, commenting that even some parents are starting to question the sh the condition of the books that their children have. Yeah, um, you can only put so much tape on textbooks, and mm -hmm. so you know every student I've talked to, because you know even when the board was deciding whether or not um, we should try for this election, they, you know, we involved students and staff and had them help identify some of the needs, and um, you know the kids were great in that they were like, oh yeah, our textbooks, you know, 
they're held together by tape and you know during the summer we actually bring kids in to help repair textbooks and we buy a lot of tape because <laughs> the textbooks are so expensive and there's right. no capital funding exactly um, our technology is aged you know the industry standard for replacement is um, three to five years and you know our most of our computers are about seven plus mm -hmm. years old and so some of the software doesn't run the operating systems and so you just have compound problems it's kind of like you know a car if you um, have a tight budget and you say well I can't buy a new car right now I can keep driving keep fixing it well at some point you know the useful life of that um, piece of equipment is over and you have exactly. to replace it. So we're right. at that point with almost everything. You're spending more on repairs. Yeah, so furnishings, mm -hmm. equipment, vehicles, it's uh, So this is what you're asking the voters to pass is, is assistance for these types of items that are in really deplorable condition. Yeah. They just can't wait and the longer you wait the more cost there will be in Absolutely. the future. And there are so. campus repairs and security um, mm -hmm. things too. It's, all right. It's a long list of needs for sure. Absolutely. So Superintendent Yuren, you are asking for a bond. That's correct. And the difference, a capital bond for us is similar to what Mingus did about, I want to say it was about seven years ago. They asked the community for a capital bond to mm -hmm. repair their buildings, which were in desperate need of repair mm -hmm. at that mm -hmm. time. And we're very proud of those buildings right now. I served on that group to help with that capital bond. And Mingus looks gorgeous. It and, does. Uh, it is. It makes us very a proud. A school that we can be proud of, all mm -hmm. of our whole community. We really are. And uh, Cottonwood Oak Creek School District has not had a capital bond since 1995. We have been debt free since 2009. <clears throat> and it, very similar to what um, Dr. Ty is talking about with the Mingus needs, we have those needs as well. Pretty much ditto, ditto, ditto on everything he talked about with textbooks, technology, um, safety with our buses, our average age of our buses is um, 17 years old and the life expectancy really is about 10 to 15. So again the expenses of repairing those is dollars that's taken out of the classrooms uh, to keep those running and more often we're having those break down uh, with students not getting home on time because we have uh, buses that are broken down. But um, we need additional dollars for our buildings. We have six sites, uh, really seven sites that we maintain. And we could ask for 10% uh, of what's called our assessed value. Mm -hmm. That would be about 20 million. Mm -hmm. The governing board decided to go really prioritize that, knowing the needs of our community, and is asking the community for a 15 million uh, bond. Mm -hmm. It's like a mortgage on a house. Right. And um, those dollars will help repair our buildings. Um, we have in every building we have, we have leaks in our roof. Uh, the other day we had one whole school out standing in the rain because we had a one of our roofy or our um, roof leaking, which then shorted out the fire alarm system, which is woefully outdated. We can't get parts for our fire alarm system anymore, but it did set it off. And so all the kids had to depart from their classrooms and stood in the rain while the fire department came and found the short and got it turned off and safely got our kids tucked back into the dry classrooms. We arranged again in another area. We had to relocate two classrooms because of uh, the roofs um, doing damage. So this is, um, we have some structural damage. Um, we have just aging buildings. We have buildings from 1923, uh, and our newest building that was built is Mountain View Preparatory at Tavasi, mm -hmm. and that was in about 2002, mm -hmm. 2003. So, so it's even 10 years old yes. now. That's hard to believe. It just seems like it it's is. the new school. So we kind of call it vintage to contemporary. Right, <laughs> right. And then with your Cottonwood Elementary School District, those buildings, as I understand it, were temporary and were all Always meant you know, to be and temporary. That's, that's really interesting <laughs> because they were the main, uh, the bulk of the buildings at Cottonwood Elementary School and really Cottonwood uh, Middle School as well and some out at Oak Creek uh, Elementary School, those were temporary buildings. Uh, I was visiting with a person who's actually doing some repairs at that building mm -hmm. now and he said, didn't I go to school in this building? <laughs> Wasn't it supposed to be temporary then? Right. He, and he, so, was, he had the longevity to remember <laughs> yes, that. That's exactly yeah. correct. 
Okay, well, let's take a little break, and then we have a lot more topics to talk about to help the voters in the community um, understand more about our children and really some pretty desperate needs that we have at this time. Thank you. We will be right back. So I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Mayor Diane Jones, your host here today with Dr. Paul Tai and Superintendent Barb Uren. We're talking a little bit about the school override for Mingus and the bond issue for um, Cottonwood Oak Creek School District. So what are we asking the public to give to help our children in these instances? It's, you know, how help us understand as a taxpaying public what you're asking for us in dollars say per month starting with Mingus. Sure. So what will this cost the taxpayer? The override would be for seven years mm -hmm. and for uh, an average house with a hundred thousand dollar value it'd be about a dollar ninety two per month and after seven years the override would expire so it's a you know a fixed time frame mm -hmm. um, and that amount would be, um, they call it a 10% is maximum, so it wouldn't mm -hmm. exceed 590,000 per year mm -hmm. for, the, uh, for each year. Okay, and if you buy a new bus, what does a new bus cost? Well, a new bus starts at 150,000, and you know, depending on the type of bus and the capacity, um, they go up from there. Mm -hmm. So they're quite expensive, and even the repairs, you know, I. I saw our uh, need for tires this year is um, about eighteen thousand dollars just for tires. Wow! And we've got to keep those kids safe when right. they are being we transported. Won't, we won't compromise safety, right. um, but it, you know, but it takes, having takes some funds of, to do that would yeah. certainly be helpful. And as Barbara said earlier, those things just take dollars out of the mm -hmm. classrooms. Okay, so for Cottonwood Oak Creek School District, what would your bond issue cost a taxpayer? Again, a bond is like a mortgage, so mm -hmm. we're looking really 20 years into the future. Okay. And a capital bond generally is about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And for the average assessed value of a home of 114000 the cost would be about 595 per month. And I think it's interesting to know that um, you know, if you really figure that out over the life of that uh, amount, it's not that much. It's about seventeen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well invested. These schools belong to the community. They're well used. I think you can drive by our schools uh, every evening and see uh, kids, youth, um, families, um, our senior citizens using our tracks. They're well used. The buildings are used. So we look at that as an investment number one for our students' mm -hmm. education and their safety and security, and also that these belong to the community. Absolutely. Uh, we share them. And they, There's a lot of community ours. activities there that is. happen for everyone right. in the community, mm -hmm. So in both schools. We're mm -hmm. certainly projecting what those needs are for the mm -hmm. next 20 years for our community and for our children. Kind of just as a, a joke maybe, it's when the cost of duct tape costs <laughs> is more than the cost of a new bus or right. a new series of books, maybe it's time to look at the problem. It is, and I think it's important to also kind of, in a nutshell, when we look at what's happened to our budget, and we're very proud of how we have maintained our buildings. The need is not because we've not maintained them. Right. Um, because we really take We've had very conservative governing boards mm -hmm. who have put the dollars into maintenance of our facilities. Um, but through the 
cuts that we face through the states, we used to receive about 1.2 million a year to take care of our capital needs, maintenance mm -hmm. of our buildings, and student supplies. We now have $220,000 a year that we're supposed to maintain all of our facilities with and buy capital supplies with. And, and you have seven facilities. Yes. And it's real frustrating. We know our job, and our job is to educate students. But when we're sitting there and we can't buy textbooks mm -hmm. to serve our students' needs, um, it becomes almost a, a comedy of errors mm -hmm. in our responsibility to educate our children, know what we need, but not have the dollars to right. meet that need. And, you know, just as, as um, someone who's not within the school system, but you know, a taxpayer um, on the outside looking in, it just seems like we local folks are are really being asked to help a little bit more because you know, on on the statewide level, there have been so many cuts, and so it's going to you know, we live here, and we these children are our families, they're our friends, they're our community's children, mm -hmm. they're our children. And it just behooves the local community to take note because people at the state level don't drive through Cottonwood or come to our schools. It's up to us, really, if, if the state is not able to provide for some of these things, then I feel personally on a local level we have to look at this. Mm -hmm. Mayor, I appreciate you saying that because I think one of the things that we've always loved about serving our community here is that support from our community. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. really that realization mm -hmm. that strong schools, strong business, equal strong community and mm -hmm. that we're in this together to serve the needs of making this a great place to live absolutely work and, play. and be mm -hmm. proud I mean that's you know if a new doctor wants to come to your community and work at Verde Valley Medical Center or the Sedona Medical Center and they have children the first thing they look at is how do your schools raid mm -hmm. they're not going to move to the Verde Valley and bring their services to our citizens to our elderly to our families mm -hmm. if we don't have a good school system they're and, just not going to be here and even if they don't have children their you know property values are yes. affected by the quality of the school system Absolutely. so they are they're still asking even Absolutely. without uh, having school And you know children. I always this is just my own little analogy because I am you know finally to social security age but I don't have children and throughout the years I've lived here 28 years I don't recall ever voting no on a school's needs and I feel that it's my responsibility and I might have to give a little more you know out of my own personal life my own personal budget but the fact is is that education you know helps people on social security because you've got to start in kindergarten you've got to start in preschool teach these children so that they can become productive members yes. of our community and they will have high paying jobs mm -hmm. to help pay for all of the you know the programs that a lot of community members um, and seniors too rely on mm -hmm. so it's very important to you know to bring jobs to our community um, have an um, educated work Workforce. That's the business that you're in. That's mm -hmm. what you are doing. You are educating our children to be productive members of society, and you're trying your very best to ensure that they can have the highest paying job that they desire mm -hmm. to have, That's and you're providing the education so that they can attain those goals. Mm -hmm. So let's take another break, and we will be right back. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov.
Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. Of course, I'm Mayor Diane Jones, your host, with Barb Uren and Paul Tai. And they are in the leadership of educating our children. Let's talk a little bit next about this recent court decision that came down and the resulting litigation and how that might impact Mingus Union High School and Cottonwood Oak Creek School District. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah, well, there's um, been some ongoing litigation that um, was, uh, the case is Cave Creek versus Ducey. So there's a consortium, but Cave Creek School District is um, the lead uh, plaintiff. And um, it stems back to Proposition 301 um, back in 2000 that required the um, state to fund, increase funding for education either at 2% or the rate of inflation, whichever is lower. Well, and since 2008, 2009, they stopped doing that. So there was litigation to, um, to require the legislature to fulfill voter initiatives. And so the um, at every level, the plaintiffs prevailed that, in fact, you know, the legislature is bound to follow the will of the people. So, however, the state has appealed at every level. It went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled that, yes, in fact, the, the state is bound to fund um, what the, the voters approved. However, um, that decision came out, and so there's a recent decision about, well, what does that mean? There's, you know, six years of unfunded um, dollars, so there's a back payment that's roughly 1.3 billion dollars cumulatively um, to the state, and then there's a current year of about 317 million dollars. So um, that is the current um, litigation as well. How much has to be paid back, and what are we going to do about it? So again, the state has appealed, and there was a recent decision that was in the news at the superior court level where the plaintiffs again prevailed. The court ruling was that yes, the state has to pay back the, um, the unfunded amounts and they have to increase current year funding. The inflation cumulatively would be about 7%. So um, that's roughly $317 million. Well, the governor even spoke and said that you know the state will appeal, so it's likely headed to the Supreme Court again. And um, you know, I th think the uh, the projection is there'll be some kind of decision after the legislature's back in session, so probably late winter. Um, there's a lot of speculation about what that means. Um, one of the things that's happened in other similar cases with um, educational funding issues has been the state said, okay, we'll give you the inflationary increase, but we're going to take it away from here. So they move funds around. And so capital is a great example. We have to show on our budgets our capital allocation that resulted from a voter initiative with students first money. And um, then we show the, the cuts. And so it has to still appear on the budget even though it's unfunded. So the allocations we talked about that we used to receive, which weren't necessarily adequate, but that's what we received, we have to still show them on our budget and then show the reduction in the budget. Um, so there's um, speculation that you know something like that may happen. There may be a settlement where, um, it's my understanding, the plaintiffs have offered that let's just forget about the 1.3 billion, the past dollars. Let's focus on current year. Get us, you know, to the inflationary level, so we at least get funded the same amount we did in 2008, 2009 and let's move forward. And you know, so there's offers, but the, the offers haven't even been acknowledged. And then you're thinking about your $3 million or a little more than $3 million? $300 million. $317 million statewide. And how many schools are there in the oh, state? Goodness. Hundreds and hundreds. There's 240 some odd districts, so there's okay, a lot. Okay, districts. And there's a lot of schools, so that would have to be divided up and the schools yeah. haven't received the 1.3 billion, so things right. are crumbling. And it's, there's it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's no windfall. Yeah. It's you know yeah. roughly seven percent of a base level support. Mm -hmm. Many anticipate that there will be a standoff. Mm -hmm. Many anticipate that it, it comes in a base level support as mm -hmm. well. So if those dollars, those dollars would be beneficial no matter what. Right. But if they come in a base level support. That's for maintenance and operation. Right. That mm -hmm. does not address the capital needs that the two districts still right. have. Right. And one of the things that we would love to have those dollars, but we also want to look into the future and the vision of the future of becoming at least in the average range mm -hmm. in the nation of uh, school funding. I would like to see it above the average. Right. Absolutely. We are what number? 40? 48, I believe, currently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we. So per pupil spending. 
in Arizona. We are 40. Woefully. Both both in revenue yeah. and in expenditure. Both, if you look at it different ways, okay. we still rank right. At the, you know, at the very bottom, the bottom. I mean, wow, that's that's just unbelievable. Okay, so even if the legislature should um, obey the courts. Which in the past they haven't always done. Right. That's, <laughs> that's the standard. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, then it still isn't going to make a school rich. Right. It's and in, still and a and struggling kind of impact. Right. And as Barbara said, it doesn't affect capital funding. Right. So the you know the so election, that's what these these this bond and the mm -hmm. override are about capital, and that would be I mean so if you got those funds, would that be teacher salaries? It can be student programs. It student can be programs. Teacher salaries. It can mm -hmm. be you know we cut so many positions. Our nursing. Right. So many right. of our the, programs are at the cost the of utilities. Yes, the cost yes, of yes. insurance and other things Operating have gone up. All those things go up right. and yet and funding goes way down. Right. So right. yes, everybody knows that their electric bill or any kind of utility, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. taking more and more to run those those businesses. So they go up and you, mm -hmm. your funds go down right. to pay those. So, okay. So what would happen if these bond, if these elections or these the bond and the override fail, what would that mean to the schools? For our district, that means that our buildings will require more maintenance, um, and more expenses, less dollars to the classroom, and it, eventually it would mean having to reduce programs if we're going to keep the buildings open and usable for students and for our community. Um, so bottom line, we would have our buildings continue to decay, less safety for our children, less security for our children, um, and less efficiencies, and technology that is not gonna meet the needs, currently doesn't meet the needs, will mm -hmm. even um, be more woefully inadequate. It's already in the dinosaur yes. age, and so it would <laughs> go further back than those that. And those things you talked about will cost more later. They will. So, and it the compounds expense. if you have a it leak does. in the roof and it st starts causing damage and it even continues. continues. Just increases. kind of, I mean, you, an analogy would be the streets and the interstates right. in it Arizona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, by the time we're able to fund patching those potholes in the interstate, you can get past. You yeah. can't patch it's them anymore. It's going <laughs> to be so expensive to go back and redo. And we so have that right now. Mm -hmm. We'll have to actually take up the asphalt because you can no longer patch it. It's mm -hmm. too late. Mm -hmm. so. well, we're running into situations where, you know, we've had buses break, at both districts have buses break down and the towing expenses, you know, it's just taking dollars away from kids and, you know, so neglecting these items, you know, textbooks that, uh, you know, the tape is there but it's not really, you know, working, computers that don't run the software, we need to have, um, you know, quality education for, you know, college and career readiness for all of our mm -hmm. kids. It's, it starts to suffer. Kids are sitting in desks that are falling apart, we try to repair them and weld them and, um, you know, do what we can, but it's become student safety issues mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the longer we put it off, the harder it is to, to ever catch up so you have a, a safe and secure environment where, you know, the world-class education, which is what we both want for right. our kids. And Mary, just to summarize, for the capital bond, we're calling it best. Mm -hmm. Buildings, efficiency, safety, and technology. Mm -hmm. That's where the dollars go. Okay. And that's why it's a capital bond, because we have the building needs in a greater degree than does Mingus Union mm -hmm. High School mm -hmm. District. Mm -hmm. And we're happy to show people what uh, mm -hmm. what's you know happening Absolutely. and you know the, um, the Cottonwood Oak Creek District has tours arranged. Mm -hmm. We have standing invitations for tours um, that our kids lead. Right, visitors. so you probably could get on the cut. I, mine is a little more hard <laughs> here. Yeah, mine is not I'm quite as hard. Yours, uh, yours <laughs> looks a little mine. nicer. Mine's <laughs> been through the mill. But um, we have, we're having what we are calling coffee, cookies, coffee, and children. That's correct. At Cottonwood Oak Creek School District. And you can get a list of times. It'd be Monday, September 29th from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. at the Oak Creek School. And then Wednesday, October 1st, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. at Dr. Daniel Bright School. Friday, October 3rd, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. at Cottonwood Middle School. Tuesday, September 30th, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. at Mountain View Preparatory. 
Thursday, October 2nd, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. at Cottonwood Elementary School. And you could probably see find this list yes, on the internet yes. on your website. On our website, yes, you can. And just get into Google and Google Cottonwood Oak Creek School mm -hmm. District and you can get this list. And then uh, Dr. Ty, Mingus Union High School has a standing invitation to members of the community to come and visit the school. You have student ambassadors. That's correct. Who will take the public, uh, members mm -hmm. of the public around and show them the school mm -hmm. and we're happy to do that anytime um, we started that last year and it's been very well received um, in fact even our, our boards mm -hmm. mutual boards did tours of both uh, both sets of schools um, both districts and we had uh, we still have a lot of community members and even you know people from Phoenix area who come up and they're really impressed so it's it's great and the students do a super job uh, they're, oh, they're proud of their school too so if you would like to um, take a tour of either school. You can call the superintendent's offices and make those arrangements. So we're just hoping the public will come out and learn about our schools and our children and support our our schools, our children, our teachers. They're all very, very well worth it. So today we will end with That's the Way It Is in Cottonwood.